Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Latch Mama podcast. For those of you who are joining us for the first time, the Latch Mama podcast is a podcast for the mothers and parents in the trenches of motherhood. You're listening to the Latch Mama podcast. I'm your host, Melissa Wirt, busy mom of six and owner of LatchMama.com. Join us each week as we talk about pregnancy, breastfeeding, postpartum, and all things motherhood. Hi. Hi, friend. Um, today, Lindy and I are getting together. We are starting a new podcast series um, where we are going to talk about some affirmations, even though I find them a little wooey. A little um, cheesy sometimes, but they're good. I, yeah. I mean, I've, I'm, I'm coming around. You've embraced the them. I'm starting to embrace the idea of affirmations, but we have a really cool thing going on um, for the next few weeks. Um, we are going to talk about this awesome blanket that we made. It was actually originally a water bottle. It kind of mm-hmm. came out with our um, Mother's Day bundle last year, which we called the Good Enough Mama bum- Bundle which is kind of just inspired by the idea that none of us need to be perfect. Um, If we can just show up and be good enough, um, you know, we're going to be okay and our kids are going to be okay. So we had this blanket made um, and we wanted to talk about some of the things that were on the blanket. So the way this works is that after you guys listen to this podcast, if you guys subscribe to the podcast, as well as go share it on a social media platform of your choice, take a screenshot of doing said things and send it to podcast at latchedmama.com. Um, we will send 100 blankets out. So 100 blankets out each week. Um, and you only can win one once. So um, yeah. So go ahead and do that after you guys listen to the podcast um, and we will send you guys a blanket. Yes. I'm totally Love stoked. It. Um, and it also is kind of fun because we get to talk about some of the the deeper things that we enjoy discussing Yeah, um, from a friendship level. And we get to kind of bring those conversations to you guys, which is which is fun. It's kind of our favorite way to podcast sometimes is when we forget that you all are listening and we just, um, I don't know, kind of have some friendship time. Yeah, we have we have quite the um, the list of things. So we're going to see if we can keep it to okay <laughs> to certain affirmations. But I know us, and it just all is connected, it's and all it's connected. all is so good. And and if anybody knows, um, always the moral of the story is just do you. Yeah, always. always I feel like that always, should be always, like always. it should be like the just do you podcast. But yeah. anyways, what so is our first one? We're yeah, ta- are you so there's going to be blanket? four. Yeah, there's going to be four, and we're going to kind of pick out two to three. Okay. For each podcast, and we're gonna try to do our best to talk on those. So four weeks. Um, so there's gonna be four, four weeks. episodes that is going that are going to talk yeah. about um, some of these. And I think the way that we broke them up is that we're gonna start kind of like pregnancy, postpartum, and then kind of go through. Yeah, we're gonna try to create this little journey <laughs> of affirmations <laughs> for you, like pre motherhood, pregnancy. So funny. But yeah. it's it's also connected. It's so, so. funny because it's like we're gonna create this beautiful journey. This. And only that is what motherhood <laughs> was because motherhood is instead just. This <laughs> messy puddle of just like oh i thought I, I thought i was okay with my body oh whoa yeah. whoa 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 no i'm not like it's yeah. just this whole big thing that just comes no i'm betting they're all gonna be jumbled and connected and this beautiful chaos of a mess but but just to let you yeah. know we we, we have we, we've created a plan but it may not work out that way but um, it'll be good welcome to our lives yeah. in general mm-hmm. once you just assume that plans will not work out i feel like there's a That's there's motherhood a right there yes absolutely, absolutely. All right, so we have three we'll try to hit on okay. a little bit. And I threw one of them into it because I felt that that's what I needed literally off the bat. So we're going to talk about how our like, body... Hold on, you needed it like today or you just needed no, it when you had your babies? way back. Yes, okay. yes. Um, my body has done extraordinary things. Um, hold on, I don't have that whole one there. My body has done... My body does and has done extraordinary things. Sorry. Okay. Um, motherhood is really hard and it's okay if you don't love every moment. Okay. And then I'm going to throw in the whole boundary one, which can go in anywhere. Anywhere. But it's okay Maybe to it set boundaries. Every week. And I think it should go in every week. <laughs> but I think it's a really good thing to throw in at the beginning as well. Oh, so. All right bodies we've talked about this before we go around and round in circles you know lindy and i both were um athletes you know i feel like i always regarded my body as strong um i knew going into getting pregnant and having a baby pretty quickly into the process i saw it as 
running another marathon or training for another sport or, um, you know, I was really, really excited about the end and getting to do this monumental thing that I hadn't done since I played college sports or run a marathon and I was going to push my body and I was going to test it and it was going to be this great new opportunity for my body to show me what it could do again. Yeah. I don't know. Did you have any of those thoughts at all? <clears throat> no, I had no idea what I was getting into. <laughs> no, I had no clue. No clue. But yeah, I also, when I was like thinking about this stuff, I think we go to that physical mm -hmm. aspect and a hundred percent there is labor physically yeah. raising the kid. But I think now after like years, when I think of my body as like a collective whole, yeah, I am so proud of like the non necessarily physical things as well. Like well, look at you bringing me back to the collective I, wholeness. I, I, I feel like I had to because I was so, so challenged. I yeah. felt like in those other areas, whether it's mental and emotional. And I feel like that is just so much in there. So that's what I'm like. Okay. It's funny. I hear the word body and I think like physical being, but I do so, too. No, I mean, I, th I think that, <laughs> I mean, so much of what I'm learning about the mental stuff, um, and safety and stress and the way that the mind can control those systems within your body. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I was having an absolute perfect pregnancy with my first baby. Like it was amazing. I did a centering pregnancy program, which I highly recommend, especially for first babies. It was just kind of like group therapy meets prenatal care. Um, it was fantastic. Do they still do that? I don't know. You see it a lot. Their VCU had a program at some point. I don't, I don't know. I the never, I, I I never did it, but it was really cool. Yeah. But yeah, but it was, it was a really, really neat experience. Um, but I showed up, I don't really, 34 weeks, maybe 33 weeks pregnant for um, one of my prenatal visits and my blood pressure was through the roof. And I was selling real estate at the time. I was working in corporate America. I was worried about what the nursery was going to look like, what the, his coming home outfit was going to be. I was going to quit my job on the other side of it. I literally had spent probably 80 hours trying to find the perfect diaper bag. I mean, I was like way knee deep into mm -hmm. the part of motherhood that I wish somebody told me did not matter as mm -hmm. much, but nobody could have told me it didn't no. matter. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's one of those things you just have to figure out. And for some mm -hmm. people, I'm sure it does matter. But for me in that moment, I think I was probably running from a lot of stuff that I hadn't worked through and just trying to find... I don't know what, what was going to happen. Yeah. But anyways, my blood pressure shot through the roof. I had to do 24 hour like urine collection. Like it was this whole big thing. And was I going to have to be induced? And I wish somebody had slowed down in those moments. And my midwife kind of did at the time. She was like, you just need to chill. Like you just need to chill. I didn't stop going to work. I didn't chill. I didn't understand in my 29, 30 year old brain, seriously, how connected the, mental emotional and physical bodies are yeah and I kind of learned it <laughs> I kind of learned it because then I went into labor at 37 and a half weeks um wasn't induced and I was able to do I think what I had been doing for most of my life which was just like compartmentalize everything that was happening and I could stay in denial and <laughs> denial is such a strong and the ability I guess that I have to compartmentalize what is happening in my body and separate emotion and feeling and all of this stuff I'm pretty much a pro at it enabled me to literally completely ignore the fact I was in labor until my water broke um, and then the car. in our family room and <clears throat> then the baby was born in the back of the car so it's <laughs> It's incredible, though. It's incredible to go on this journey and look at pregnancy and especially early motherhood as such a learning and growing experience. Yeah. I just thinking back to being pregnant and my body is supposed to do this and this is what's going to happen. So we talk about like yeah. good plans or, uh -huh. you know, hey, this is what's going to happen. This is what my body does. It's all going to go how I like. Da, 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 da. And then maybe it doesn't go that way. And yeah. then it's like, well, maybe my body's not amazing. And it it failed to do the thing that it's supposed to do. Yeah. So like, I'm sure we could dive into, you know, all of that regarding kind of birth and pregnancy and how things end up. And, yeah. you know, um, 
that can always be a hard one to kind of process through after the fact if you had these expectations of what your body should have done. And then your body um, doesn't and it, do your it. Your body maybe doesn't necessarily do it the way that it wants yeah. to or it, or it plays out and it doesn't mean that it's any less amazing of an experience or, um, you know, something like that. Yeah, and I think that it's it's such a hard thing because I don't think that you can tell somebody, hey, don't have any expectations. Don't have right. expectations of what your birth's going to look like because you're really not in control because then I think we run into trouble because mm -hmm. having babies in the United States is not the safest thing for women, especially women um, of color. Um, so I don't think the messaging of, hey – don't go in, don't have expectations, oh, right. don't mm -hmm. advocate for yourself because you're just going to be let down because you don't have control over what's happening. But I think truly going in and trusting your body mm -hmm. and finding a really good care provider and really truly working on that is a way that you can kind of build in those extra levels of safety. There are amazing care providers in the United States. And if you can't look at yours and say, if this goes south, I'm still going to have the support that I need mm -hmm. to realize that my body is capable of doing amazing things, then you need to do an about front and go find somebody else. Um, just because somebody has been giving you a pap smear since you were 17 years old does not mean that they are the person that needs to help you have a baby. I was I, like, I just want to put that on a billboard somewhere. Maybe one day we'll have enough money as a country, as a company that I'll just throw it on a billboard somewhere. Yeah, it's just, it's really heavy to like think back and think about what I was thinking and what I was feeling. And I don't think I, I think I was just so overwhelmed with all of it mm -hmm. as far as expectations and education and all of that. But I just wasn't prepared. Did you come out on the other side of your first baby thinking your body was amazing? Yes, I think yes and no. I think I'd have to think a little bit more on it, but you know, I went in and I was like, oh, this is what this is what's going to happen. I'm going to be able to do this. Um, back then, I was around a, a group of people that really were, hey, you know, you don't need to get, you know, an epidural like you can do this, which you can. Absolutely, you can do it. But that was a, I just, a, the feelings that I had around that and coming from being an athlete, I was like, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, I can do this. And I was like, really kind of blown out of the water, like not really prepared for that and whatnot. And so I did have um, an epidural with my first and it was absolutely what I needed at the time. Have no regrets. It was great. But I did have a bit of that sense of that things didn't necessarily go how I wanted to. Um, it didn't stick with me for very long. Um, I think I was able to just kind of process through it. I wasn't too difficult. But um, yeah, I think that was a little bit tough as far as the physical aspect of it and the expectations. Yeah. And I think really normalizing the fact that I would say it is more normal for somebody on the other side of childbirth in the United States to feel like things did not go the way that they expected than it is normally for people to be like, hey, that was exactly what I planned and that was great and that was wonderful. And I I don't know where, where we got off track a little bit as a country or, or where the support needs to be or where the shift needs to happen with that. But I do believe that there needs to be almost like a universal support system on the other side of birth to help women in that postpartum period, because not only are they like, are we rattled by the idea that our identity is completely shifted, that we have this new little baby, that we do such a poor job at preparing women for the realities of what that actually looks like as opposed to just make a pretty nursery and put them in some cute clothes and everything's going to be fine, that I think we sometimes forget to take care of the mother. And I think mm -hmm. that that idea, especially with what you're saying about the body and the mind being this collective whole, that is us. That is our self. Mm -hmm. And I think if we do not have that support on the other side of birth to say, your self is still worthy, you know, you're still wonderful and worthy of love and care and affection and it's not all going to your baby i think what that happens what happens is you start shame and if you start shame from the from the moment a woman has a baby and then we're trying to say hey let's let's build this village let's connect them together let's let's come together as a group and help each other but we're sending women home from the hospital 
already feeling not good enough and already feeling shame, then there's no pathway to connection unless there are safe relationships where they can talk about the shame because that's the only way that you get through it. So I know it sounds like this huge big picture, but I think that if we can just believe that our bodies are capable and we can have those people in our lives and those safe relationships that help us realize that, I think that's one of those steps towards starting to fix this disconnection that we all see in motherhood. Yeah. It's interesting. A friend, um, I don't often hear from her, but I played college volleyball with her. She recently got married and she's due in July. So she shared it with a couple other teammates that we were all in the same class. Uh And like now mine are, you know, almost seven to 14. And um, the roommate I stayed with hers are like six to 12. And so none of us have a little one. Mm -hmm. And she shared this and just the excitement and like it just brought all these like feelings up like what do I say like I really want to be super honest I really want to meet her where she's at like and she's really sweet and she's like I will take anything you guys want to share yeah you know any suggestions or and all of that and it really made me think of the second one which I do think what you were talking about before ties in Uh as far as expectations and you know your body performing to what you think it should and things like that and it's not um you know, motherhood's really hard and you don't have to enjoy every Mm -hmm. moment. But I think with that comes acceptance in knowing that, hey, like I didn't enjoy this moment or Mm -hmm. that moment of birth wasn't necessarily what I thought it was going to be, didn't really love or, you know, whatever the moment Mm -hmm. is, but just accepting that like that is okay. And you're going to have these moments that you Mm -hmm. do and don't Mm -hmm. really enjoy or really remember or things like that. Um, And so... I've always kind of forgot my train of thought, but um, I wanted to really communicate to her that like, it's, it's, it's probably going to be the most incredible thing you ever do, but it's Mm -hmm. also going to be the one that literally just rocks every, every single aspect Mm -hmm. of you physically, emotionally, mentally. Mm -hmm. But like, other than saying that, like, how do you even (laughs) communicate these things? Because, Um, but I do think for me, this was one of the biggest ones. And I think I still struggle with it in that I don't have to enjoy every moment. Mm -hmm. Everything is really hard. There's going to be really good ones. And there's going to be ones that just maybe don't necessarily live, live up to those expectations of what my body's supposed to do and what my heart's supposed to feel and what, you know? Yeah. And I think that that's probably true. I mean, we were talking about that from a company standpoint this morning is like when you look back and you or look forward or look at your daily life and you look at your relationships and where you spend your time and where you spend your energy, what is the takeaway? The takeaway should hopefully be that there's more good moments than there's bad moments. But truly, like there's not anything that's ever happened in my life where I have not said like, there were some really, really hard moments. There are some really, really hard moments, literally from, I say this all the time, from the time my feet hit the floor to the coffee maker in the morning. There's a moment where I've made a mistake, where I've not shown up well, that I have you know, questioned my authenticity. or the, the, There are moments all of the time where things feel hard. Mm-hmm. And I remember when my entire world was rocked and I had that baby in the back of the car And I didn't have the emotional, I don't know, self-awareness. I don't even know. But my midwife called me. We weren't super close. She was a great lady. But she called me and she said, are you okay? And I had no ability to tell anybody at that point if I was okay or not. And that was just me as a general. That wasn't me like 24 hours post-baby. That was just Melissa as a person at the time. Um. And I really think back on those weeks that followed that. And Nathan came out screaming and then really didn't stop screaming for a year. And he had colic and he had reflux. And the only place he would sleep was on top of me. So this whole narrative that my brain had set up that I was going to be able to lunch with this baby and we were going to go on these beautiful walks and we were going to nap together and we were going to enjoy the fact that I wasn't selling real estate and I wasn't in this like high performing career anymore um, were absolutely shattered to the ground. Like, shattered and then they don't tell you that hey it's not you it's the baby like I mean it's not the baby but it's not me but who is it and why is this happening and is he ever going to grow out of it and this is this is this the rest of my life Mm -hmm. and I remember we went out to dinner with these people who this other couple that we were in the centering group with and I assumed that we would just kind of raise our kids together because we were in the centering group together 
But then they had a baby who didn't cry, and I had a baby that cried all the time. And the idea now that this other thing was going to affect my relationships moving forward mm-hmm. and what those looked like was a really, really hard thing for me. Because, I mean, it's not like they didn't say, they said to me, oh, we can't hang out with you because your baby cries. But, like, they were going to nice restaurants or they were going out to dinner. And I was like, we literally cannot leave the house right now because this baby yeah. cries everywhere we go. Um, and it was hard. Holy moly, was it hard. Um, didn't love him any less, but it was hard, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I just, I just, I just think that we just do a super terrible job at telling mothers that it's going to be hard. It's not going to be a Pampers commercial all the time. There are going to be times where you literally want to pull your hair out and bang your head against the wall. Yeah. I even struggle with the hurt word hard because like. I don't know. Things that I think of that are hard or like a hard workout. Yeah. <laughs> or I don't know. I'm trying to plant this bush and I'm digging this hole and it's just hard work. Like yeah. that when I think of you and I can literally vividly picture mm-hmm. and probably not the right picture, but yeah. the story that you told, I can picture you there and it's not even just, oh, this is hard. It's like a completely consuming i have no idea is this gonna end mm-hmm. like am i like so the word hard just yeah it almost feels impossible and, and I, that's yeah those are some of like the feelings that i had because i could have put myself and in we, that position we emotionally grow i think at the rate we're supposed to grow in life like mm-hmm. i'm starting to come to terms with that like we maybe do the work on ourselves when we're supposed to do it and stuff like that and i think the good news about that stage of my life and where I was is that I had such little, I don't want to say like self-love, but self, it wasn't really self-awareness. I don't know what it was, but I valued myself so little at that time that it was almost easier for me because I didn't think I deserved anything more or I didn't think that it, it should be any easier. It was so, so hard, but there was nobody Mm -hmm. in my life really telling me that it shouldn't be that hard until there was this one time we went to Florida to see my mom. It was the first time we went anywhere with him. He was like, I don't know, six weeks, eight weeks old. And, um, we arrived in Florida and I remember I found my mom in the bedroom and she was holding him and she was crying and I was like, mom, why are you crying? And she said, because most of this isn't normal. Like the, the, this, the, this isn't, this isn't the way this stage of your life of he's supposed to be. And I mean, we had bring, we had brought him to the pediatrician. It was just kind of one of those things where like they couldn't do a whole lot. Mm-hmm. Did Eric and I really want him on high test meds? Like it was just a lot of reflux. I mean, we had, you know, I mean, it was just, do we bring them, do you bring them to an ENT at eight weeks old? Do we let it, do we ride it out? And I know so many parents have been in that same spot Mm -hmm. but it was really only that moment that I realized that it could that motherhood could look differently and that that hardness Mm -hmm. that I was feeling was maybe different and you know I I think we all have those moments in motherhood I mean I know you've had them with a bunch of little kids and yeah little support and yeah I have all like the time hop pictures that literally I get like a complete like physical reaction from and I try to remember that day and and, and it's just it's it, just so difficult. And admitting that there's hard times and we've spent what five, six minutes on the hard times, you know, we could spend twelve hours on the good times. So yeah. like we're not trying to say that it's negative, but we do mm-hmm. think that there's something in normalizing the fact that it's hard. And I don't think that there are enough places and enough people that say, Hey, this is hard. Cause then what happens, and we're gonna go right back to the shame and I'm gonna go right back to the connection thing, is that you feel like it's hard. You go on social media. It doesn't look hard to anybody else because they're baking cookies and they're out at the park and they're playing and they're they're happy and their kids are giggling and you're like, oh my gosh, Mm -hmm. it's not hard for them, but it's hard for me. So then you feel shame and then you don't reach out and then you don't connect and you don't make those meaningful relationships where you can meet at a certain level where you get the same vulnerability from somebody else and they say, this is hard for me. Is it hard for you? And there has to be a certain level of connection, 
I feel like at that point to be able to have that conversation. What were we talking about earlier with another podcast we were listening to the difference between being vulnerable and broadcasting? Yeah. And I, I mean, it's, I think it's just so true. It's like being vulnerable. Isn't flipping or flipping your camera back around on Instagram and crying to the screen. That's broadcasting. That's broadcasting your emotions. Being vulnerable is realizing it's hard and finding that human connection and having that moment where you say, this is really hard and I need to tell somebody it's hard. Yeah. And you and it's face to face connection. And it's not social media. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I agree with it because I don't think you get that connection. I don't think that can top anything that's face to face as hard as that can be, you know? So then it makes me think of like, it's okay to set boundaries, Mm -hmm. which is like the third one for today. And how, if anything, is that possible? Because my mind goes in multiple different directions. Like, do we just have to get launched into this hard thing and learn it for ourselves? Tying in the emotional um, growth, mental growth as Mm -hmm. you go along. Or is there something we can do on top of all the other things that you would do to fix maternal health and all of that? But how do you try to empower a pregnant mom, even somebody that is not pregnant yet. Mm-hmm. How, can, how can we get a better start heading into this really, really rough road that has incredibly great moments, but really, really difficult ones. You know, and it, it's hard because you want women in that pregnancy stage to cocoon in a bit and to not listen to what people have to say. Mm-hmm. But I think where we run into issues is that the media is going to find them and capitalism is going to find them and they're going to be sold these things that for the most part I can tell you from selling things in the maternity space nobody wants to buy things when you tell them how messy motherhood is people want to buy things that are beautiful and that are clean and that show them how beautiful motherhood's going to be so if we're setting boundaries and we're cocooning in and we don't want to hear the negative stuff, which is fine and I completely understandable and pregnant women are inherently selfish and all of this stuff. And I think that it's great, but capitalism and the media are still finding their way in to create this beautiful picture of motherhood. Then how, how do we make sure women are prepared for like literally hitting that brick wall that happens after you have a baby for so many women? And I don't even know if this goes to boundaries, but it's just like, how do you figure out how to normalize, you know, some of these feelings that most women feel after they have a baby? Yeah. I mean, I can only speak to like my experience and like looking back what, and Matt and I have had the conversations about how even when we got married, we had like three sessions or something about marriage and we just think it's like a complete joke. Like we really kind of laugh about it. How honestly like people should do like two years of therapy and work on their self literally before they get married. And I truly feel that before a baby, although this is kind of life and you kind of grow and you got to do things together. However, that partner of yours, Uh if you guys can do some work (laughs) prior to this little thing, rocking your, entire marriage and your entire world and really get to the point where you can communicate and have ways to communicate Mm -hmm. to try to work together as a team because I felt so incredibly alone in that journey not there's no blame we were just both completely naive as to what this would do Mm -hmm. to not only a marriage, but to mm-hmm. to me physically having this yeah. baby in the motions and not even being able to communicate. So yeah, and I think I, that stable yeah. foundation, if you can really, really make sure that you are communicating, can help since you're in this together. And I think there are going to be some things that inherently your partner, especially if they are if you're in a heterosexual female male relationship is not they're not going to be able to understand right so i think really truly working on those relationships and that connection and learning about yourself and what your barriers are to connection and making sure you really have those true friendships heading into those early stages of motherhood i Mm -hmm. think are it's crucial because i think all motherhood does is teach you in some ways that this really weird 
balance, at least for me, where it was, you need people, but you don't need people. Like you need people, but you're afraid to show up. You need people, but you're afraid of being judged. And like, it's just this constant, almost battle of being too tired to find your tribe. It's this constant kind of circle of where should my boundaries be? And I think some mm-hmm. of us end up cocooning in too far because we're afraid. Because could you imagine, I was writing about this this week for the book, but like, could you imagine in those like, because I think you and I probably handled early motherhood very similarly, but in those days where it felt like everything was falling apart, you hadn't slept in days, all of this stuff. Could you imagine a, a close, really intimate friend letting you down or being mean to you or coming, like doing what just happens naturally sometimes in friendships. I mean, I know I couldn't. It was so much easier to control what I could control. And at Mm -hmm. that point, I could control who was in my life and who wasn't. Couldn't control when my baby slept. Couldn't control when I was going to eat again or when I was going to shower again. But I could control the fact that nobody outside of this, nobody outside of my circle was able to hurt me. Yeah. Or let me down. No, I agree. I'm sure I did the same thing. And I think it was just so easy, which I know this will tie into other things that we'll talk about in other series, but you have this baby and it's just like, not that you've, that all that worth is gone, but it's like that, that is like your focus now Uh and you forget about yourself and you forget about all that, you know, about all of that. And so it was so much easier going to that point in channeling like that this is like my world. So Mm -hmm. it, it, I didn't have these feelings like, what do I need? What do I want? Mm-hmm. Because that just seemed selfish. Mm-hmm. Whereas yeah. it probably wasn't. I needed some healthy boundaries and taking care of myself, but it became about the kids. Uh-huh. So yeah, there was no thought in building and cultivating like a really good friendship and how I can keep that up mm-hmm. because friendships, I mean, there are responsibilities both ways mm-hmm. and it's really, really difficult. Mm-hmm. Um, I think some people find it easier, maybe depending on a personality, mm-hmm. you know, that kind of thing, but I don't find it easy mm-hmm. for me. Um, it is, it's, I, I feel that responsibility on that other end and it can be heavy. So when you're mm-hmm. taking care of multiple so yeah. one, two, three, four, five, six, six little people. Yeah. I, I don't have anything left. I mean, I struggled to have what was left for my husband. And like, yeah. that was really difficult for us. Like, but, but we can't do motherhood alone. So it's no, like, where, those, exactly. where do we get those boundaries? Because I yes. mean, even now, like Lindy will text me after a day that we're just kind of both running in different <sighs> directions or a day that like, I'm head down on something and she'll say like, sorry if I wasn't a good friend today. And it's so funny because I feel like we've probably reached the point in our friendship where like, it's not going to break at this point. And like it's a bad day can happen or a day where we don't talk can happen. But I think we rely on each other so much right now that, you know, it, it, it very rarely goes without talking. But if we go a day without talking anyways, but it's just so interesting because in the depths of motherhood, I would have, adored more than anything to have the support that Lindy gives me now, but I wouldn't have been able to maintain it. You wouldn't have been mm-hmm. able to maintain it then either. No. So it's just, I, I don't know. I don't even know how we went from boundaries to village building. Maybe it's yeah, because sorry. it's always in, no, it's always in my <laughs> but brain. It, it is now connected. That we've done a, a really good job. I'm very we've proud of us. Very good job. Very proud. Staying on task today, but it's just, it's so interesting. Cause like, I think motherhood especially early motherhood comes with such tight boundaries because in my opinion you don't nothing nothing can fall apart like in my opinion like if I'm barely sleeping barely eating barely showering barely keeping my marriage together the last thing that what I want Mm -hmm. on my plate is also a friendship to keep together right so where is that work done the work is done potentially prior to becoming pregnant but depending on what age you are when you become pregnant depends on whether you know yourself well enough to even know who you are and who you want in your life. It's just a freaking mess. It's such mess. a mess. It's like the one thing that we honestly truly need that is really uh-huh. at the top of that priority list. But how do you, it's almost how do like you get it and how do you maintain We need more that? support from the child perspective. Like we need more maternity leave. We need more maternal mental health. We need more support. We need more casseroles dropped off on the front porch. We need that. So maybe Mm -hmm. some of that weight can be lifted. So we have more time to worry about ourselves in such a way that we can say, Hey, we need connection because every human being needs connection. But then how hard is that to say, yes, I would love that casserole or yet like, do you Especially know what I'm saying? The ability to accept yeah. that help, which yeah. goes into something else. So we don't need to get too far into that, but it's like everything seems tied to, mm-hmm. you know, something else and it's not easy to do. 
It's fascinating to me, though. It's such a great it's like my body can do dive. all these things. And it's like, no, it's okay if it can't. It's okay if you can't make it. Like, accept the casserole. Accept yeah, the help. Absolutely. But that is so difficult to do. So, But it's also admitting that it's hard, which is something yeah. else we just talked about. It's like you have to come to the point of vulnerability where you say, this is hard. I need food. Like, mm-hmm. I would absolutely love you to drop off dinner on my front yeah. porch tonight thank you this it is, is much harder than i expected or i yeah. feel much lonelier than i expected and i don't know how to fix it and yeah and it know. doesn't mean i'm not enough it doesn't mean i'm doing a poor job because i can't make dinner it doesn't you know what i'm saying yeah. all these things that we we take on meanwhile it doesn't mean any of yeah. those things it's but it's just so, but it's so weird when it's a human being because i can door dash dinner all night long and say <laughs> i know i'm not enough i don't i mean i know i'm enough but i just don't want to freaking make dinner tonight but the second but if it's somebody but, yeah but the second like oh that's like, so I made, interesting i, mean, I never I made, thought about it i mean i made double dinner one night for an after hours and i came down and mm. i was like here i know you have a busy week i know you have a volleyball <sighs> game or something like here i made some extra soup and it was a completely different experience than it would have been if I had sent you a DoorDash card or if I had, yeah. you know, if you had ordered Thank out. Thank you. It was delicious. No, I didn't mean it like that. I just <laughs> no, I know, it's I just, know. It's it's a completely <clears throat> different process, yeah. and I think that it's there's something in the imperfection in it, and there's something in leaning into the fact that I don't know. Our boundaries need to be tight, but also our boundaries, I feel like, need to be loose sometimes too. So I don't know. All Agreed. right. Uh, subscribe. I feel like a YouTuber. Subscribe. Hit the subscribe button. I don't even know if there's a subscribe button on your screen. But um, share and tag us. Uh, subscribe, share, and tag us. And then shoot us an email um, <clears throat> at podcast at latchmama.com um, with yeah. your address and a screenshot of doing said things. Um, and we will yeah. send out 100 blankets. And to don't the first forget people. the email. Yes. Emails. Important. Yeah. You guys got to send email because we need your address. Yep. To send you the blanket. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye.